Welcome to Diplomatic Corner with Premium Times. My name is Chema Kao Kapo. Today's episode of Diplomatic Corner is especially unique for us as it is the first time we're interviewing with a friend of Nigeria whose posting is coming to an end. We're here at the U.S. Embassy with the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, to talk about a time here in Nigeria. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Thanks for, for having me. Thank you for doing this with us this morning. I understand your schedule is very tight. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of programmed down to the minute these days. <laughs> yeah, end of tour, I guess. Uh, so first question is about the Nigerian elections. Mm -hmm. You recently wrote an op-ed mm -hmm. after um, the Department of State had issued a congratulatory message to mm -hmm. the president-elect of Nigeria. And question there is to ask if the U.S. is walking back on the statement made by Ned Price. Uh, and that will be the comments made in your op-ed about how mm -hmm. the elections did not meet the expectations of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think that those um, those two, both of those expressions are complementary. Uh, you know, uh, there were clearly some technical and logistical challenges from INEC, and that disappointed people, and we totally understand those frustrations. Um, but you know, that said, um, there's a, there there was a process that that occurred, um, um, and. Uh, some people are unhappy about that result. Some people are, are celebrating that result. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, there are well-established legal channels uh, through which to, to bring those, those concerns. And we're very, very pleased that um, uh, both uh, Mr. Obi and, um, and Mr. Atiku have uh, committed themselves to that, and mm. also that the president-elect has welcomed their right to do so. Um, so yes, it's uh, there was a, a there are some disappointments in some of the elements of execution, and we understand that that caused frustrations. Uh, but still, there is a process moving forward, and we look forward to watching Nigerians engage in it. Mm, a quick one addition to that question will be the comment made by the senator from the U.S. asking the president not to be too fast in congratulating a flawed process. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, you know, leave you to. I, I can't speak for the senator um, in that in that uh, in that vein. Um, however, you know, there is a well-established um, process here for going through um, challenges that people may wish wish to pose, and we certainly encourage all Nigerians to take full advantage of those. Mm, thank you. Last October, a security alarm was mm -hmm. raised that um, puts the country in a, a state of pandemonium. I would say, but the Nigerian government. Um, more or less, for want of words, opposed, you know, the statement saying they were not aware that there was an impending um, terrorist attack here in Nigeria. And questions have been raised on if there were no intelligence sharing between both mm -hmm. governments. I would like you to help Nigerians and myself understand sure. what happened there. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, the, the United States government just doesn't make um, announcements in a vacuum. We have an enduring relationship, an ongoing relationship um, with uh, the government of Nigeria that includes security cooperation, which is quite robust. And that cooperation also includes um, sharing, um, ra raising shared concerns together. Um, I would say that actually there are a couple of pretty public statements by Nigerian government officials about steps that they were taking uh, to, ad to address uh, concerns about security in Abuja. And I think we really have to congratulate congratulate um, Nigeria's various security services for really stepping up attention uh, to keep Abuja safe. And uh, we're always going to be a committed partner in that regard. And you have seen that uh, we were able actually to bring all of our families back because we believe quite strongly uh, that there is indeed safety and security in Abuja. Mm. So categorically you're saying that um, intelligence was shared. By, yeah. between both governments. Obviously, I'm not going to get into the discussions of private conversations with the government of Nigeria. But yes, we are partners and we speak about many things. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, you're aware, very much aware, I would imagine, of the Jakba syndrome currently in Nigeria, which characterizes um, Ni young Nigerians, especially, leaving the country mm -hmm. in their numbers in search of um, the cliche greener pasture mm -hmm. for better lives and all. And it, a research I conducted, or a survey rather, um, I conducted last year showed that the U.S. is in the top three destination mm -hmm. for Nigerian young people. And this is not even putting in context the fact that the U.S. houses a large number of diaspora, Nigerian diaspora. Mm -hmm. so, so how would, does this fit into, you know, development, helping Nigeria mm -hmm. develop itself? and also uh, making sure that migration is not as a result of um, a lack of development thereof, and also how does this fit into the whole narrative of brain drain, mm -hmm. brain, drain mm -hmm. brain gain, and brain circulation? Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, we're in a global and interconnected world, uh, for one thing. Um, it is actually a point of pride for the United States that many Nigerians seek to study. I think that they're the largest um, source of, of students from Africa and the 10th largest uh, foreign student presence in the United States. And I think that's a really great thing. Um, and, and here at the embassy, I think our job is about uh, making connections between Nigerians and Americans. And uh, many of these connections are irregardless of venue, if you will. Uh, we try to bring together um, uh, the, the various business communities to figure out shared opportunities. Uh, we do a lot of very deliberate work for cross-pollination in the creative sectors, um, things like um, uh, filmmaker education and um, working hard to have Nigerian and US educational institutions cross-pollinate. You know, we have uh, Fulbright um, scholars who come and study here. Uh, we work hard to think about trade between the two. So we focus on bringing US in Nigeria to together regardless of venue. Um, you know, obviously neither uh, we nor the government of Nigeria control the decisions of individual Nigerians. I would say that there are in fact some U.S. programs, uh, exchange programs, that very explicitly um, have a component of requiring a return for to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. For example, until you've been in, in back in your home country for a certain period of time, you are ineligible for another U.S. visa. So I think that um, from my perspective, I would celebrate sort of the intellectual collaboration um, that comes back from our, our, our travel between the two countries. Um, uh, the diaspora community, in, uh, Nigerian diaspora in the United States is a very vibrant and, and well-educated community. Um, and that has probably advantages as well as disadvantages. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, what, among the most uh, heartening things I see is when I see young US educated Nigerians who are here uh, doing fabulous stuff in, mm -hmm. in technology and in, in the creative sector. Um, and I think it's a question of people recognizing that there are opportunities in bringing the two countries together. Mm. How can Nigeria and the US better partner to see that there's a replication of what the Nigerian vibrant diaspora is doing in the U.S. here in Nigeria, so a replication of the great works you're doing in the mm -hmm. U.S. and how to bring it back home. Um, I think that there are a lot of people who uh, self-consciously reach out uh, to, to, to diaspora populations, and I think that that's um, um, something that I've heard several of the candidates um, speak about, about drawing on the talent that's in the United States as they craft uh, a new administration, and I think that that's a wonderful avenue for doing so. Interesting. You spoke about creating conducive environment. Now, I'm not quoting you verbatim, but mm -hmm. you talked about businesses and how mm -hmm. the embassy here and, you know, ease of doing business. And it brings me to the question of trade. Mm -hmm. the, the trade numbers or the trade figures, I, I dare to say, can be better mm -hmm. between both countries. And so how do we make those figures better both ways? But since you speak for the United States, mm -hmm. I would imagine you speak on the United States position on how to make this better? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that um, I think it's very true um, that Nigeria has perhaps missed some opportunities uh, in its own business environment and its economic policies that uh, maybe could use a, a rethink. Um, for example, uh, you know, domestically, if you're the, the 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 huge amount of money that's spent on the fuel subsidy is ruinously expensive, and those are funds that could be having alternate uses in things like health and education and infrastructure. Um, and then, or if you take if you decide that you want to diversify your economy and diversify agriculture, that's great. But sometimes, if it comes in the form of import bans, that has the uh, unintended effect of raising uh, food prices for consumers. So I think it's uh, I think that at a new administration, it's a it's a good moment to sort of think and look at what uh, Nigeria is doing and think what helps or hinders private sector gro growth. There is huge interest uh, from American companies in Nigeria, a very robust um, American business chamber. Uh, but all investors, whether they're Nigerians operating in this environment or foreigners looking for engagement, um, seek stability uh, and, and predictability, uh, the ease with which one can uh, move money in and out. These are all factors that, that color um, the business environment in Nigeria. And I think that uh, there is some work to be done to make it more attractive. It is inherently attractive because of just the size of the market. I mean, no one wants to be outside of Nigeria um, because it's just too tempting a place. Yeah. But I think that it, it could be made easier for people. Mm. I'll shoot two questions at you at the same time because they're quite similar. And first is to ask you 
to describe U.S. Nigeria relation, how mm -hmm. would you describe that relationship, and how can we better that mm -hmm. relationship? Well, a sixty-year um, uh, relationship, whether it's government to government or people to people, we're always looking for ways to develop it a bit further and make it better. Um, so I think that um, uh, the, the to, to think about how we make it better. It's a question of looking at where we intervene and then what is the next step that we need to do. You know that we're really big here on, 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 on PEPFAR, the President's Program for AIDS Relief. Mm -hmm. And we've put something like 1.7 million people on treatment. We've invested billions of dollars. Um, and now we, the, the step ahead is, since we're very close to epidemic control, how do we go about finding those last people? What is the strategy that you need to find the, the people that you haven't already managed to come across? So that's a big thing there. We, of course, were uh, spent over $140 million on COVID, both uh, contact uh, testing and, and tracing in the early days and helping to support the provision of 100 million vaccines um, over the last year in Nigeria. It's a great accomplishment. But the next step, how do we make it better? How do we take these activities in HIV and in COVID and figure out how to make them a better part or a more uh, predictable part at the core of health systems and health systems delivery? It's a really mm -hmm. important point. Um, we give, last year we gave um, $350 million of humanitarian assistance in the Northeast and Northwest um, in areas of you know, health and sanitation and food and shelter. So that's great, but then how do we transform that into um, a sustainable future for everyone? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's worthy of reflection. Um, think about cultural preservation. We just, the Smithsonian and a couple of other institutions just mm -hmm. sent back 29 bronzes, and it's wonderful to have them home. Now we need to collaborate. How, how should they, those be curated? How can they be used as a mechanism to bring museums um, and citizens uh, and artists together mm -hmm. uh, to examine a, a, a wonderful cultural heritage? Um, the students, as you mentioned, okay, great. You know, I told you I'm proud that they're the, the largest source of students in, Af uh, in the United States for Africa. But I think I would say a new a step forward that many people would appreciate is continued efforts by us on how to reduce those wait times uh, for visa interviews. Um, security cooperation, wonderful. We have a robust partnership, including, for example, the recent sale of the A29 Super Tucanos. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so as we move forward and think about other platforms, how do we reinforce effectiveness and precision and make sure that citizens are, are kept safe? Nigeria um, at the African Leaders Summit um, signed the Artemis Accords, which is all about space. So moving mm. forward, how do we organize a responsible civilian uh, space exploration? Climate crisis. Uh, the United States government gave uh, funding in, re in response to the flooding, uh, both to uh, for shelter and, 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 and emergency assistance. So moving forward, how do we figure out how to balance climate concerns and addressing them with the importance of Nigerians' own power needs, access to electricity, um, for, for example. So my time is coming to a close here, but on all of these themes, I'll be, I'll be watching to see how that evolution continues. Yeah, interesting. So one thing I, I needed to do clearly will be to describe the relationship mm -hmm. between the U.S. and Nigeria. A lot of people have said that's like a hand-me-down shop kind of relationship mm -hmm. uh, between the Niger between the U.S., I beg your pardon, and Nigeria. So for, for clarity, mm -hmm. I would want you to in, perhaps use five words to describe the relationship. Mm. I would say that it is robust. It is uh, entrepreneurial. Um, it is can I use phrases? Sure. <laughs> uh, it, it seeks always to improve itself. Mm. Uh, it goes to uh, core needs of Nigerians' population and, and, and areas of mutual interest. Um, I think it's in terrific shape, but as I just outlined at great length, there are always ways that, that we can make it better. Um, I think uh, at the African Leaders Summit, you saw that President Buhari was one of the few um, presidents who participated in a one-to-one -one meeting. Yeah. Um, and there's been a, a steady parade of uh, U.S. high-ranking officials uh, coming to Nigeria. We had Secretary Blinken here both virtually at the end of the pandemic and then in person in November 21. The heads of the uh, people from the Power Africa, um, uh, our special envoy for climate change, John Kerry, um, uh, the Development Finance Corporation, uh, Trade and Development Association, all have visited here. Um, it's, a, it's a relationship that is marked by great opportunity, and I think that we're very busy working to meet that opportunity, to meet the promise, if you will, of the African Leaders Summit, to engage as, as steadfast and, and reliable and proactive partners. Hmm. Let's get more personal and talk about you in Nigeria. Uh -huh. 
Before I arrive in Nigeria, I'm sure you've heard a couple of stories on what Nigeria looks like. And this is not peculiar to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Africa has a lot of stories that may be true and untrue. And you definitely have had your own share of it. So mm -hmm. what was it for you before arriving? So actually, this is kind of a fun story. So the first time I came to Nigeria was when I was a first tour junior officer next door in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And I came to Lagos. And frankly, I felt like a country bumpkin in the big city because here's this amazing metropolis. Um, and then it took a while for me to come back again. I came as a West Africa director in um, 2011, just before the elections, and Abuja was still a new and sort of artificial capital, and I was like, oh my goodness. And um, I came back then again uh, when I was ambassador to the African Union for a conference in Lagos on the African Continental Free Trade Area. Mm. Um, and, and so it just was a reminder of the centrality in, of Nigeria in any big uh, international or continental decision. Uh, while I was here for that, this is the fun part of this story, um, I was at a reception at the Consul General's residence, um, which of course in the day was the ambassador residence, as yeah. it was when I came from Cameroon in 1989 maybe. It was the first place that I ever went to a reception in an ambassador's residence, um, and I was terrified, you know, what, what do I do, what, you know, what's next, what's my role? Um, and so when I went to a reception during the AFCFTA conference at the, at the residence, um, at some point, the Consul General uh, was getting around to introduce me when they got to formal remarks, and I was nowhere to be found because I had gone outside on the, on the patio to take a phone call from the head of personnel at the State Department asking if I would agree to be put forward as ambassador to Nigeria. Yeah. So the place where I was, you know, a terrified junior officer <laughs> in 1989 <laughs> was the same place where I learned that I was going to become ambassador to Nigeria. Hmm. The rest of the evening was quite difficult because, of course, between being told that you're the candidate and becoming the ambassador, Ambassador is a very, very long road. Um, and so there were all these fabulous Nigerian and American business people inside at this reception, and I could tell none of them my, my stunning news. But hmm. it all came to fruition, and I eventually got to tell that story to that group of people. Interesting. <laughs> so are you trying to say that there were no negative stories around Nigeria before you chose oh, to visit? You know, I mean, every, you can say negative things about every place, but when I come here, um, I see that um, uh, Nigeria has, has grown over these years. Um, Nigeria addresses a lot of challenges, uh, but the thing that doesn't change about Nigeria is it's, it's just warm and welcoming and vibrant people. It's totally a constant across uh, mm -hmm. all my visits and my various uh, interactions with this country. Hmm. End of posting, end of tour, would want to know what you've enjoyed through you stay here? Oh, it's so hard to pick. Well, you know, it's it's hard to, you, you don't want to forget the, the fabulous culture, you know, um, listening to Asa and to, um, oh, it, it, un, unforgettably, at a, a pre hetes uh, concert that we had in uh, at the residence in Lagos, I'm getting, being hauled up on the stage by John Doe to dance in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of the, of the concert. Um, uh, so much, and I actually went to Atlanta for the Hetties. Um, great food, you know. Everybody loves their suya and their their um, their their jollof rice. And mm. um, I'm a big fan of pepper soup. I really like a lot of spice. Um, so I'll bring I'll bring that with me. Um, fashion. I haven't done it today, but I've I've always enjoyed um, adding some African some Ankara and or Adira fa fabrics into my professional wardrobe. Mm. Um, art. Uh, at my residence, I have a wonderful collection of, of works by African-American and Nigerian-American and Nigerian artists. Mm. Um, and I'm going home with some Nigerian art, too, from uh, Nike Davies Okundai and Tola Wewe and from Victor Ekpuk and from Oshu Audu. Um, so my, my, my permanent residence in the United States will be well adorned uh, by the, 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 the highlights of African art. In here in Nigeria. I, I should do well to send you some Nigerian fabrics then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so last one there, if you were asked to do an appraisal of the Nigerian state, what would be your assessment? Um, as I said, I think it's a place that um, uh, has perhaps uh, missed some economic opportunities in the way it's organized itself, um, uh, but that, that, is a, that is also a, a source of of inspiration and encouragement uh, that you realize that there are solutions to, to these problems. Um, and I, I think also less looking at the Nigerian state, um, what I like people to take away from the uh, events of the last uh, few weeks is that despite all the disappointments and frustrations, something very, very special happened in these elections. You know, it wasn't only about, um, it wasn't only about two parties or somebody's really gonna win. Nobody's outcome was assured. 20 states flipped parties. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a given that re 
went to party and governors, you know, got their got their Senate seat. Mm -hmm. And so people showed that they're willing to look for alternatives. And the people who aspire to lead this country need to hear that call, um, that people would like to see options, people mm -hmm. would like to see uh, their government uh, doing its best uh, to support them. And I hope that, that Nigerians take that hopefulness mm -hmm. along with some of the disappointment and frustrations um, that they've experienced in recent weeks. Thank you very much, Ambassador Leonard, for interviewing with us. This is where we wrap up for today's interview with you. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. On what journey, and we hope you come back someday to visit Nigeria. Again. I bet you I will. I'll tell you that uh, it wasn't the only reason I specialized in African studies, but a big part is that I come from a very cold place, and I don't like the winter. So I think you'll see me back in Africa again. Before you know it, probably between the months of December and March in particular. Okay. <laughs> when the winter is still ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's where we wrap up for today's interview with Nigeria's uh, U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard. Thank you.